Joanne Fluke was born with a rare medical condition, leaving her shorter than a 10-month-old child. The major thing that I'm continually asked is, you don't have legs, right? And my response is, yes, I do, but they're really small and I sit on them. But having tiny legs hasn't stopped Joanne from pursuing her dream of becoming an acclaimed dancer. In just four weeks, she'll dance in a competition that could change her life. But first, Joanne must find a partner, and it won't be easy. Whoever I choose, I don't expect them to practice four or five times a day, but what I expect is they're just as passionate. The clock is ticking, and there's little time to rehearse. Will the dancer with tiny legs have the physical and emotional stamina to make her dream come true? On this ordinary suburban street lives a remarkable young woman, 34-year-old Joanne Fluke. She's done so much with so little, I guess you could say. She's really just kind of said, there's no mold around me. I'm going to do what I want to do. And not listening to 90% of the world out there saying, well, you can't do that because you're handicapped. She's always been one to stand up and do what she wants to do, and I'm proud of her for it. If Joanne had been normal, she would have never touched the lives that she's been able to touch. And uh, we're very proud of her. Joanne to a T is unstoppable. She sets her mind to something and she just makes it happen. From the waist up, Joanne looks like any other woman, but due to a rare medical condition, she only has tiny legs. The condition I have is called um, caudal regression and it's a birth defect. My spine stopped at my waist and my legs are webbed at the knee. Joanne's thighs and calves are connected by a fold of skin called webbing. This webbing prevents her legs from straightening. The nerves that would have enabled Joanne to walk didn't fully form in the womb. As a result, she has no feeling in her legs. Once you get to know me, you realize that I'm really not disabled. All of my friends and relatives, they don't see the disability, they see me. Joanne lives with her parents, but she leads a totally independent lifestyle. Getting up in the morning, it's just like anyone else when I get ready. The only difference is I do everything on the ground. A lot of people look at a person with a disability like their house has to be accessible. And I've just really adapted more than wanting people to make my environment accessible. And I'm sure that life would be a little bit more easier if everything was accessible, but you know, you, you deal with what you've got. At home, Joanne rarely uses a wheelchair. She finds it quicker and easier to walk on her hands. My arms are not just my arms, they're actually my legs. I mean, I walk around carrying my whole body weight, which is around 85 pounds. If I broke one of my arms, I would literally be breaking a leg and an arm because they do both functions. I think people think that a person with disability kind of lets go of their appearances at times, and it is important to me. If I'm going somewhere, it my makeup and my hair, it has to look good. One of the challenges with my birth defect, um, caudal regression, is that I can't feel my legs. And so if there's a lot of pressure, a sore can pop up and they can get infected. The weight of Joanne's body on her lower limbs prevents her blood from circulating normally. This could lead to life-threatening pressure sores. Every day, Joanne must rub lotion on her legs and feet to help her circulation. But other than the pressure sores and some spinal issues, she's really pretty healthy. Staying healthy is vital, 
especially if Joanne is to pursue her lifelong dream of becoming an acclaimed dancer. Her passion for dance began when she was just three years old. As soon as she could get herself upright and support herself with hands, she'd stand on one hand and twirl and just really like to just dance. <laughs> When she was in school, Joanne took part in every dance extracurricular she could. In middle school, I was involved in drill team. And then in high school, I couldn't do the lifts and the kicks for cheerleading. And when she wasn't dancing in school, Joanne was copying the moves of her favorite boy bands at home. <laughs> Do you already know what I'm doing there? Well, yeah, that's the new kids on the block thing. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad I don't dance like that now. <laughs> oh, my. Joanne's brother, Brandon, has grown up watching his big sister perform. Oh, it's in the jazz hands. Oh, Was my. that like the Joanne version of the funky chicken or what? <laughs> 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 the funky what chicken. Was? These days, Joanne is passionate about a more elegant style of dancing. Oh my goodness. I wanted something that um, combined the disability community and people without disabilities together. And I realized that with wheelchair ballroom dancing, there was the opportunity of dancing right there and breaking down some barriers that I've always wanted to break down. So in 2007, Joanne started a wheelchair ballroom dance group called Groovability with dance instructor Chris Pruitt. Our motto with Groovability is don't forget to dance. And I think as a person with a disability, sometimes we forget that we have all the same emotions and all the same feelings and all the same desires. And that's what dancing does. It brings out all of those things. So that's what Groovability is all about. But Chris recently moved to Hawaii leaving Groovability without an instructor and Joanne without a partner. But Joanne's determined to keep her dance group going. Myself and our board started going to other dance studios and looking for instructors. And now we have more instructors. Joanne hopes one of Groovability's three new instructors will also become her new dance partner. getting ready to pick my new dance partner, which is just incredible because I didn't even think that that opportunity would have even have been there five months ago, so. The pressure's on. Joanne's already entered the prestigious Revolution Dance Competition. It'll be a crucial first step toward her goal of becoming an acclaimed dancer. But can she find Mr. Wright and devise a winning routine, all within just four weeks? I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> From the waist up, 34-year-old Joanne Fluke looks like any other woman. But due to a rare medical condition, she only has tiny legs. This disability hasn't stopped her having a full-time job as a fundraising coordinator. Hi, this is Joanne Fluke with Kansas Youth Empowerment Academy. I sit at a normal desk and do the normal jobs that anyone else would. Thanks. Bye. Being mobile allows Joanne to live an independent life. You know, I'm 34, and there's no way I could be doing what I am doing today if I was not driving. I have hand controls, and they're kind of like a motorcycle. I turn to accelerate, and I press down to brake. If you're looking from me from the outside, I look like I drive just like anyone else, but the secret is, obviously, I don't. And being able to drive also allows Joanne to pursue her passion for dancing. She regularly trains straight after work, and tonight, she has the final rehearsals before the auditions to find her new dance partner. Joanne has three very different guys to choose from. I would love to put all three dance partners all together, and then that would be the perfect dance partner. That's what you look for in a dance partner, is 
Are they going to be there through the thick and thin if you're competing? Um, are they going to hold you accountable? And are they going to also motivate you and, you know, keep you going? Her first rehearsal is with Tony Witt. Tony is just full of spunk and loves to dance and um, very much is, I think of him as the Latin dancer. He's just a lot of fun. All right, run from the top. Okay, let's go. She's looking for somebody that has the patience and the passion enough to try and experiment and trying to stay within the boundaries of, of what dance means and not just push somebody along in a wheelchair. It is difficult and it takes a lot of work to make it look like they are a couple. They are one when you dance. One rehearsal down, two more to go. But first, Joanne's going to have a quick bite with her best friend Lorraine, another member of Grooveability. Okay, you ready to go get some food? You bet. I'm hungry. Um, how about our chicken salad? Sounds good. Awesome. When Joanne was growing up, she was told by doctors that she would always have to rely on others for help with everyday tasks. But she defied the odds and has never had a full-time caregiver. Just because of the way that I've been brought up, we never looked at my disability as like a barrier. I did everything else like anyone else would do. So I just assume that I can do it all on my own. Joanne and Lorraine have been friends for over five years. They often go to a drive through together for dinner. I've noticed the older I get, um, I really try not to take out the wheelchair unless I know that I need to. That's one of the main reasons why I go through drive through a lot. I don't have to get the wheelchair out and then put it back in. We would like two fried chicken salads with lots of honey mustard. No, nope, that's it, perfect. Oh, yeah, thanks. Okay, thanks. It's now time for Joanne to rehearse with her second potential dance partner, dance instructor Brandon Lee White. Brandon, who is our newest um, instructor, but also my newest potential dance partner. And he was just really excited about this opportunity with Grooveability. And that's what just is amazing with him because you can just see the sparkle in his eyes. Let's go straight into the, our, our course move. So from here, straight from here. You gotta show passion, you gotta show connection. And if you don't, then it's not really dancing. The more and more Brandon and I work together, that connection is just growing more strong. There it is. Well, when I'm dancing with her, I don't really think I'm dancing with a chair. I think of I'm dancing with Joanne. That was good. Good. Joanne has one more dance partner to consider, Jake Marshall. But Jake's busy college schedule has kept them off the dance floor. You know that practice makes perfect, and we want to be perfect. If we could have had like one more week or even two more days, you know, I wonder where we would be even in that short amount of time. One, two, three, four, and five. What I get out of dancing and Joanne is the way she, you know, exudes just a joy of dancing. It's an honor just to see somebody appreciate 
that ability to dance that much. Jake, Brandon, or Tony have within their grasp the opportunity to become a star in the world of wheelchair ballroom dancing. And it's up to Joanne to decide which man is most likely to help her achieve her ultimate goal. Would you like to bring the gentleman back into the room? Yes. I'm ready. Joanne Fluke has always fought for what she wants, including becoming a dancer. Her fight began right at the start, when she was born prematurely 34 years ago. The doctor said, there, there are some complications. And I said, what? And he says, well, we'll just let you see, and then we'll start talking to you. She was there uh, just in the diaper. Then you could tell that the legs were webbed. Pretty soon I went back to the waiting room. It was such a high, and then it was like such a low that I, I passed out. Joanne was placed in the intensive care unit, and her medical team feared the worst. The doctor says, I don't think she will live past 72 hours, and I go. Joanne was born with a severe case of caudal regression, a rare birth defect in which the bottom half of the spine is missing. She will never be able to use or feel her tiny legs. She was so small, and her legs, they were webbed. She couldn't straighten them out. Her heart is rotated. Her liver's where her stomach should be, and she's got one-tenth of the intestine that a normal person would have. So there's no guarantees, you know, what, what was going to happen. But Joanne defied the doctor's prognosis, and just a few weeks later, she came home. But at the age of five, her health took a turn for the worse. She was having breathing problems. Her lungs, her organs were collapsing down on them, on themselves. So they tried to build up her spine and give her organs more room. Doctors took a bone from her leg to create a lower spine, which was supported on either side by metal rods. While the bone and rods fused, she was put in a body brace. She was in that, that body cast for 10 months. They would Mostly all the way through kindergarten. <laughs> well, and before. Yeah. Joanne's parents fought to have her accepted in a mainstream kindergarten. But being the only disabled child in school sometimes had its disadvantages. There was this one day that I came home from school and I was really quiet and I actually went outside and made up a song and it was, I'm not a midget, I'm just me. Because one of my classmates had called me a midget and that really hurt my feelings. That's when I knew I was different in a, in a unique way. This is one of my one. favorite pictures. When Joanne was six, she became a big sister to her adopted baby brother, Brandon. And she was so proud of her baby brother. Yeah. And she's in her body cast there. Yeah. I do remember when my brother Brandon came, and literally we were about the same size. As they grew up, Joanne's disability was never an issue. Did you ever see people make fun of me without me knowing? Me, maybe. <laughs> I don't remember seeing anybody else do it. I never saw it as, I gotta be nice to you because you're disabled. That's true. If I was mad, you were my sister and I was gonna get you and that was the end of it. That's true. When Joanne was eight, like most girls, she had her first crush. I literally kissed a boy in second grade and all my girlfriends dragged the boy down to the ground and I got on top of him and kissed him in the soc soccer field. So that's when my parents knew that they were gonna have issues <laughs> because I definitely like boys. Yeah, she had the ups <laughs> and downs of, of, you know, I think I think this boy likes me. No, I guess he doesn't. But I don't think she ever thought it was because of the wheelchair. She had dates to junior prom and senior yeah. prom and. 
She never had a serious boyfriend until she went to college. And it was a good relationship, but it, it just, it wasn't meant to be. It'll happen. There's no time schedule, but uh, it's gonna take a special person. Does Joanne Fluke think she will ever find Mr. Right? Um, I do not know. I am pretty picky and I know what I want and I want that sexy godly man and I haven't found him yet. But do I think I'll find one? I hope so. Joanne knows she'd love her own children one day because she really enjoys being an aunt to her brother Brandon's kids. I've been blessed with six amazing nieces and nephews. I've never been told that I can't have children. It just has not happened. And the major reason obviously being that I haven't found the right person. But all of those desires and feelings obviously are still there. The only thing different about me is that my legs are small and everything else is just like any other young lady. But sometimes, Joanne's unique body attracts attention in public. Can I sit in the middle? Hey, what? Are you walking on your knees? Okay, I'm walking so on with my hands because this is how I get around. Where are your feet? I have them. They're right here, though. See, they're right there. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I hear a lot is, that's the girl who doesn't have legs. I really try to keep myself grounded and say, really, I'm just Joanne. Yes, I may be a young lady who has a disability, but when it comes down to it at night, I'm Joanne. Joanne credits her faith for helping her come to terms with her disability. It was this strong belief that got her through a life-threatening back surgery 10 years ago. My spine was starting to collapse, and so my organs weren't getting the room that they needed to do what they're supposed to do. And so I had a 13 and a half hour back surgery. Metal rods were inserted into Joanne's back to strengthen and straighten her spine. But while she was recovering, Joanne got a life-threatening infection from a pressure sore. My doctor says that it, the pressure sore came because I started dancing. Again, the friction of the body brace caused the pressure sore, but you can't stop me from dancing. Joanne's spine is still vulnerable, but she's as determined as ever to pursue her dream of becoming an acclaimed dancer even if it means pushing her body to the limit. I knew that it would be challenging. I did not know that it would be as challenging. Thirty-four-year-old Joanne Fluke was born with tiny legs. But that hasn't stopped her from pursuing her dream of becoming a successful wheelchair ballroom dancer. Today, she's holding auditions to find a new dance partner. To help her with the decision is acclaimed wheelchair dancing coach, Sandra Fortuna. Joanne! How are you? Sandra Fortuna is actually the first instructor that really pursued and brought wheelchair ballroom dancing to America. The pressure is on for Joanne and her three potential dance partners, Tony Witt, Brandon Lee White, and Jake Marshall. Sandra will teach the dancers a new routine, which they'll have to perform flawlessly in their audition. One, two, three, four. <laughs> and five. Do you like that? Yeah, I do like that. We've never done that. <laughs> it's a new way of dancing I'm asking them to do. Joanne's been dependent on the able-bodied dancer moving the wheelchair around and not really physically participating in creating the movements and the positions and the shapes of what they're doing. I knew that it would be challenging. I did not know that it would be as challenging. There's a lot of structure to this. I'm so sorry. OK, 
can't work with this. Pick up with one, two, three, four, and five, six, turn seven, okay? For each of the guys, weeks of hard work boil down to this moment. Joanne's former dance partner, Chris Pruitt, and Sandra Fortuna will judge the auditions. I went to see them say, holy smokes, they really dance. Man, I could feel the music when I watched them. I could see something going on between them. That's what I would like to see. All right, dancers. Dancers, we're ready to begin the auditions. The first couple will be Jake and Joanne. Audience this way. Yeah. Yeah. could step outside so I can talk to Chris and Sandra and then we'll make I'll make my final decision and you guys have all been great. So Chris you were my first dance partner. I'd like to know your opinion on the three potential dance partners. Professionally I think they're all very good. Um, Tony is a little tall. I didn't even think that there was a height issue. What I saw was someone who loves to dance. Oh, yeah. And he applied everything I asked him mm -hmm. to do. And Jake, I, I like him a lot. You have a nice rapport with each other, which I enjoyed seeing. I was impressed that Brandon was in the background practicing the choreography. That tells me that he's very competitive. Yeah. <laughs> I am confused now. But it's a, it's a hard choice, but you have three who will work out, no matter what you choose. Absolutely. It's not only me that I'm concerned about. I also want it to impact group ability. Whoever I choose, I don't expect them to, you know, practice four or five times a day. But what I expect is they're just as passionate. And you're right. All three of those guys are passionate. but the decision is ultimately Joanne's. Would you like to bring the gentleman back into the room? Yes, I'm ready. It's the moment of truth for Jake, Tony, and Brandon. I had made my decision. ultimate decision is Brandon. You know, part of me wishes I could be that person, but that's, that's life, I guess, you know. It's a dance business. I feel happy for both of them. They're a good match, and uh, I can't wait to see what they could do. I'm really honored, and I'm excited that she picked me, and I'm gonna do my best to make her the best. 
Joanne and Brandon waste no time and start rehearsing the next day. I thought we needed to get together today to tell you that our first competition is in a month. So we have um, a month to put together what Sandra gave us and spice it up a little bit with our stuff. So, are you up for it? Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm okay. Ready. Joanne and Brandon are devising a new Paso Doble routine, a Latin dance inspired by Spanish bullfighting. Following tradition, Brandon plays the matador and Joanne is his cape. They're experimenting with new dance moves, but Joanne needs to be careful she doesn't push her body to the breaking point. With the dance competition now just a week away, the pressure is intense. And that's when accidents happen. <laughs> 34-year-old Joanne Fluke has tiny legs. But that hasn't stopped her from pursuing her dream of becoming an acclaimed ballroom dancer. With just a week to go before her first crucial competition, Joanne and her mother have the important task of shopping for a ballroom gown. Oh my goodness. Look at these shoes. Look at the high heels, the stilettos. Wow. Do you remember when I used to walk on my, get your shoes and walk, walk put my up. hands in yep. them? You couldn't walk do in those. Them. No. Those are too tall. You can barely get socks on my feet now. <laughs> I'm actually kind of glad that I had the wheels instead of yeah. These. Those are almost weapons, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Joanne wants a dress that will reflect the passion of the dance, but also her personality. I would describe myself as energetic, passionate, and creative. I consider myself sexy, not a scandalous way, but more of a sexy confidence way. What do you think? Ooh. Really like that one. All right, let's try on the next one. Okay. What do you think? Ooh, it's very pretty. Very pretty, but I think for the dance you're doing, you want red. Hi, <laughs> oh, Joanne. I think we would have to get something done about the front of that one. Yeah. yeah. Did we find one, Joanne? I think so. I think we might have found the dress for the Paso Doble. That's pretty? really pretty. Yeah. Yep. It's the final rehearsal with her partner, Brandon Lee White, before the dance competition. And the end of the routine is proving tricky. Ah, that's Paso Doble. What is that? How fast you going to do? Da 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 da. Oh! You okay? Yeah, I'm good. That was Ooh. good. You okay? Yeah, it was good. It was good. I, I caught your head with my hand <laughs> on your way down. I didn't feel that. <laughs> to be honest with you, it happened so quickly that I didn't know that anything had really happened. I think it scared Brandon more than it did me. I'm good. <laughs> competition would have been over. <laughs> you know something we can try? What? I like what we have, but you know what we, ha we have never done? <laughs> what you just did? This move, where I'm on my knees and you come around. You don't want to change it now. You have. That's an easy move, though. Oh, you don't want to change it now. We have like 30 minutes, and you want to change it? Yeah, you're right. This is late in the game to be changing choreography. Today's not meant to be changing choreography. No. But I think it's necessary. Let, let's practice. Let's do it. I, th I think in 20 minutes, you're going to be thinking different. You're going to love this new move. 
right? Okay. As a precaution, Joanne wants to make sure that the fall from her wheelchair hasn't injured her fragile back. So she visits her orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Nigel Price. <laughs> Hi. How are you? How are you? Can I give you a chair? When I see Dr. Price, I'm hoping that he looks at my back and realizes that, you know, I'm in the best condition that I can be. Uh, Joanna, can we have a look and see how your back yeah. is now? Yeah. I am concerned about, I know that I'm starting to do more with my body again, um, with the dancing, and I hope that my body can take what I'm wanting it to do. Certainly you're exercising and you're stressing your, your bones, but um, you've got to arm your skeleton with some vitamin D and some calcium just to kind of keep things to keep it strong. in competition shape. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yay. So obviously you should be pleased. <laughs> oh, I'm very pleased. Oh, I'm very pleased. That's um, good. Joanne is given a clean bill of health. Three judges will have to give them a near perfect score. Okay, so I guess this is it. You've done your practicing. Now it's just about letting it show, letting it shine. Let's keep our connection, okay? okay. Looking at each other's eyes, keeping it intense, all right? Okay. <laughs> and you will do a great, great job. We will do a great job, okay? okay. So get out there, keep your mind, okay, but let it shine. The judges have never seen wheelchair ballroom dancing before. I just don't know how they would be able to dance, really, um, with being in a wheelchair. Ballroom dancing is, is very difficult, so it's going to be very interesting and exciting to see how they're going to pull it off. I think the worst thing that could happen is if the judges would see a person in a wheelchair and not two dancers dancing. on my hands how many times I've seen an actual standing ovation at a dance competition. Uh, it's only happened twice, and it was unbelievable. The wheelchair disappeared for me. To find out they'd only been together for a month, astounding, great job. But Joanne is disappointed with her performance. You're not happy. I'm too hard on myself, I know. What didn't you like? I don't know if we were connected. The guy standing ovation. I think you should be really proud of yourself. Okay. Oh Joe! Hey, Good girl! Job. Look at you. You did great. You were amazing. Hi. Amazing. Monster performance, Joanna. Fantastic. It was really Thanks. good. Joey's tearing Every... herself up right now. Why are you tearing yourself She's up? She's being hard on herself. We loved it. The judges have made their final decision. It's now time for our 20 and over duet trios. We have a first.
first place overall, going to entry number 415A, Matador Paso. Basically the best core you can get. Yeah. You look back through all those years and you think you're just thankful for every day that you have. And then to watch her do all the stuff that she has done is just, you know, we feel really blessed and, and really happy. Yeah, for her. Yeah. Just a day after the big win, Joanne is inspired to make a life-changing decision. Since winning the competition and dancing with Brandon, I've really realized that I need to leave my job and really focus on groovability. And then my personal goal is I really want to help get wheelchair ballroom dancing in the Paralympics in 2012. And to make that happen, I have to be ready. I study the best guys in the world and I compete against the best guys in the world. And now I'm gonna beat the best guys in the world and that's just how I see it. I had posted a video on my Instagram and I was running real fast, like I did about 20, 20, 25 yards in only like three, four seconds. And they were just like, wow. And they were like, we think you could set a record. And I was like, sure, if you want, to, want me to try it. Guinness World Records is there, everybody's there. Former Olympians, former world record holders are all there supporting me, hyping me up, um, getting me going. And then I just took off, man. And the crazy thing was my first one was actually faster than my second one. I was moving so fast that I slid into it and ducked under the sensor. So I had to go do it again. I was expecting, I was like, y'all don't understand. Like I'm gonna be under five seconds, maybe even under four. And I called it. First thing I said, the second I was done, I looked at all of I said, I told you. What I said? I said, I told you exactly what I was about to do and I just did it. To be a Guinness World Record title holder, I'm number one. You know, there's nobody faster than me right now. I'm the fastest man on their hands in the world. But at the same time, it also means that my family's winning, my town's winning, and my support group's winning because without them, I wouldn't be here doing this for you guys. So I was born with caudal regression syndrome. It's a very rare disease. I always work with what I got because I don't really have any other cards that are dealt to me. A lot of people say foster mother. I'm not a big fan of that because she is my mother. The foster care system reached out to my mom, said that we exhausted all our options and that uh, could you take in, this, take in this boy? And then man, about seven months later, question, the conversation came up about me being adopted. And a week after that, I was just like, yeah, this is it. This is what I want. And five years later, and it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I was just like, you know what, I'm not going to be weak anymore. And then I just put in the work as much as I could every day. I was going to two or three wrestling practices a day for seven days a week. And by the time my senior year of high school came around, I became one of the best guys in the state. And then soon after that, I became one of the best guys in the country. I'm really willing to put it all on the line to achieve my top goal of being the best wrestler, being the best track athlete. It's usually not the first choice for most people, given it's the world's most dangerous and oldest sport. And I just thought it looked fun. Everybody just accepted me in as one of them. They didn't look at me as I was different. They went hard against me just like I wanted them to. And the wrestling world really is like a close family worldwide and that's what I loved about it. I pushed myself to my absolute limit because by the time I am an Olympian and I'm a world champion wrestler, I'm gonna be shattering glass ceiling repeatedly. 
my future, I see myself being a multiple time Olympic champion. And I just see myself being that all around champ. I want to win more medals than Michael Phelps, dude. I want, I want to be that guy. I'm going to be that guy. Because why not? I know people.